What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Railroads Online and today we're back in Aurora Falls and we're going to connect up to the water well so I've already gone ahead and bought ourselves a little water keg and that's so we can supply the grain depot. Now I had to rework this track, I sort of relayed it just a little bit wider because in the last episode we kept clipping this stupid little uh, valve here so I moved the track out and I actually switched it so the main is you know offset and then I built another track that goes around and switches off, uh, it has a switch way over there there, and it has another switch over here and it just goes around and loops around and hits the uh, product line of the wheat farm here so once we get the water going we can start unloading products and selling them back to the freight depot i guess or eventually i think we have to take them to like the meat packing plant actually no probably the cattle farm first like past the freight depot to the cattle farm and then the meat packing plant and all that now i had a few comments of people who are like yo why are you building all this double track and stuff? You're just playing by yourself. That's true, but I actually have some buddies that uh, aren't YouTube buddies, just like, you know, real life people. And uh, they're going to come in and help me run logistics once I actually have some tracks set up. So I want to make sure we have some passing lanes and stuff like that. And then once we get a bunch of engines, I got a bunch of buddies who enjoy train games and uh, just want to come run some trains. So that'll be super fun. And we'll have to do that once we get more tracks set up. But in the meantime, we got to connect to the water well. And then my thought is that we're probably going to end up having like a main line that goes all the way across here all the way up here and maybe like hits up to the dredge or something or goes up this way so at some point in time i might end up double tracking this one main line section and then have everything come off of that or at least at the bare minimum having a bunch of passing lanes like this you can see i switched it so that when you come off to unload that's where you come off the switch and the main line stays straight which i thought was super cool but uh not exactly any passing lanes from here to the freight depot so we might have to double track it at some point which is something i've never really done anyway we're gonna go to the water well i had a lot of people say that the water well is gonna be a pain in the butt um mainly everyone was like oh it's like a 10 percent down you have to go down this like cliff to get there and a lot of people were even saying i should just spawn a water well industry at the freight depot but i want to you know play the map the way the devs intended so that's what we're gonna do anyway we're gonna fly there because it's straight in that direction and i feel like we should be able to see how much the ground goes down here so we're just we're basically just flying you know and we can watch the freight depot get lower and higher right and that's sort of how we can tell elevation like you can see it kind of goes up a little bit of a hill here so we have to climb a little bit and then it drops down here this seems flat i mean there's a drop off there but we don't have to go that way oh i screwed up hold on that's just that's fine we can just do this again it puts us at the same height no problem but yeah you can see it drops down there but i mean not really drops down a bit here okay oh this does go down I feel like we could just stay to this right side though. Look at how look at how low it is. Yeah. It does keep going down and down and down and down. Okay, and down some more. Yikes. Yeah, I mean I feel like we just stay right here though. I don't like there's little cliff spots. There's spots that are definitely indented that we'd have to bridge over or avoid. But I think we can just come down this way. Does this go back up? Maybe a little bit. And then that's the water well building there and the sawmills there like I kind of like staying over here anyway because then we leave lots of space around the sawmill because eventually we're gonna have to have a track that branches off and goes to the sawmill and lets us like loop around at the sawmill load up sawmill products and get back going to the freight depot oh, is this the cliff does this go oh maybe this is the cliff people are talking about the water well itself is built up on a cliff oh it kind of is isn't it sort of on a it's fine we just gotta like come out wide and then kind of slope up a little bit come up here go across here and then go down this way and then it's just gonna be a really really big loop that's all all right i think i made this work it's i'm not i'm not really happy about it but i think this is gonna be an okay track so this is zero percent here and it's zero percent here right below the water well which is like i think we're as low as we can get to the ground so hopefully we've got the clearance uh, from the spigot to the top of like the big watering cars and this should be fine I think in terms of in terms of distance yeah I, I think that looks okay it's kind of in the middle of the track if I turn this on where's the valve oh right here perfect let's turn this on yeah that's good enough that's close enough to the middle I think that we'll be able to fill the cars and then we have to climb like literally to get over this tiny little hill and this is a five percent climb which is it it's very small shouldn't be a big deal but it's just something we have to pay attention to we have a five percent literally just to get out of this stupid station because otherwise we're just gonna have a big slope track and i don't want to be loading on a slope track so if anything actually we could come in this way 
and then just come down that way and then loop around. But anyway, let's uh let's go back. Hold on, actually. Let's build a telegraph office here. Just so we have one. And we can, of course, warp over here. Something like that's probably good enough. And then we're gonna warp back to our wheat farm and we're gonna build this track up. All right, so I'm gonna start with this little bit of track that then goes to a switch. I'm gonna keep this switch for doing a loop because eventually I think we're gonna want a switch that comes up the product line there and loops around and connects to this. Um, maybe I'll put these a little closer. But the reason why is I think like if we're coming to grab products that are going to the freight depot or going to somewhere else on the other side of the map, we don't want to have to come in here and then not be able to turn around. We'd have to like push back or something and that would just be really, really silly. So if we do a switch like this, this just gives us the ability to build that loop that goes, it'll connect all the way up back to there and we'll be good to go. No problem with that. So that'll be a future plan. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to just start going down at a curve here. I'm going to try and go right along the edge of the mountainside because I think that'll be a much nicer looking track because we can kind of keep it closer to the height. Like, we're not going to have a huge amount of fill. Um, already, though, huge amount of fill, which is interesting. But we'll leave it as fill for now. If we go back and realize it's too tall, then we'll maybe make it some trestle bridges or something. But generally speaking, you know, railroads would have used fill because fill is cheap if you can do it. And uh, it's much more expensive to build wooden bridges. And, you know, the maintenance on wooden bridges is really high and all that, that fun stuff. Yeah, that's not too bad. I mean, it's a little high. On the fill. We're still going down at 2% though. So this is going to be a, a real like slog fest for an engine to come up hauling a ton of heavy water. All right. Well, I've been building down at 2% for quite a bit and uh, I'm not overly optimistic with how much further the ground is away from us now. We're still going along this cliff edge, which is like super cool, but the ground keeps getting further and further away. And like, I don't, I don't know if that's a good thing. I feel like we might run into some problems here where we're eventually going to be too, uh, too tall. But anyway, let's just keep going because, like, might as well. There we go. So, I've been going at 2% and we're just, we're just getting higher and higher up. So, as much as I'd like to continue going at 2%, like, if, if I keep at this height, we're going to have to have these massive bridge systems that just loop us around to finally get down to, like, look, there's the sawmill there. We're almost in line... Well, okay, we still have a way to go. Oh, interesting. There's like a little bit of a... I don't know if that's a cliff or something in the middle, but we're going to go way down into this, and then we'd have to loop all the way around this and find... Like, it's going to be way too high up. So I'm going to go back to the start, unfortunately, which just is... is We're a fair ways down here, but I'm going to go back to the start, and I'm going to try going down at 4% and trying to stick a little bit closer to the terrain, and maybe we can do a 4% run. We'll have to do some checks. I was just thinking about it. Like, I, I need a really... Uh, give myself a ton of money in a in a file, which maybe I'll do at some point in time But I'd like to do some checks about different ways to go up and down Elevations like is it more effective to do a steeper grade and then a shallower grade or is it more effective to just do a shallower grade? The whole way and it would be really cool Maybe I'll load up one of my old maps where I've got a ton of money and a ton of locomotives and stuff and uh, We'll do some checks at some point in time and see if uh, you know if there's a reason for that and if we can control the, the speed of a train going up a hill. Ultimately, you still have to go up the same distance, right? We have to go up, let's say, like a thousand feet or something. But I'm wondering, is it more effective to go up and down in, like, big spurts of, of high grade? Like, these little spurts, you know, where you're going, like, flat and then high grade and then flat and then high grade? Like, does that work better? Or is it better to just go up at a constant, like, two or three or four percent and keep it as shallow as possible, but for the entire stretch of the hill? Um, I don't know. I've never actually tried that before. So... Definitely could probably load up one of my old maps and, and do some of those checks and see. But for now, I think I'm just going to go... I'm going to have to go down to like 4%. We end up way too high, way too quickly. And uh, it's just going to be like a massive bridge system. So we're going to go all the way back here. And where we start to go down, we're going to go down at 4 and try and stick as close to the grass as we can. And if we have to level out and go 0, then that's fine. We'll go like 4, 0, 4, 0. And, you know, just to sort of avoid all this crazy super high track. Yeah, this is so much better. Right away, like, I've started laying track, and I said 4%, but honestly, 4%'s on the high end. Like, look, we have barely any fill. I'm trying to follow the terrain as best I can. We are definitely going down. This was just a big 3% chunk, 
but the part before that was only two because we would hit the ground otherwise and then there's parts that are like four and stuff so it does slope up it's got a little bit of an s going on we're trying to you know maximize the distance we're moving by doing these sort of lazy s's but they are all like 200 meter curves and giving us that leeway of up to four percent incline it's definitely making this a lot easier like look we were way up there on the mountains up on that ridge trying to stay at two percent so this is going to be a steeper run for sure like your your train's going to have to treat it like it's a four percent grade but this is so much better like right away we're sticking close to the ground and uh, we're just going to keep going along this right side like there's definitely a cliff drop up there but we're going to just keep going along this side here and like i don't know maybe this will be three percent and it looks the track looks a lot better too i mean you know not to be biased or anything but track with that low fill that's just kind of right next to the ground. That's always my favorite. I think it just looks like, you know, real proper railroad stuff. But yeah, like, look, look at this. This is a 3% run, and we're pretty much... We're actually losing height. We can go up to, like, 2.5 almost. We can go... Yeah, let's go 3 down to, like... Wow, that's so cool. Yeah, let's go to, like, here. And then now we'll probably have to switch to, like, a 2.5 and, and go straight. But you can see this is going to be so much better. Such a cooler run. And it's going to be easier to make passing tracks and stuff on this as well, because... We are nice and flat next to the, the ground. But yeah, let's just do another big straight run. Look at this. We can even go 2%. That's awesome. Just full speed 2% line. This is going to be super cool. Might actually be able to pull more than just one water car with the Montezuma uh, going up this hill. At least one of the small ones. But uh, yeah, there we go. And now we're going to have to steep it up again. But really, really big fan of this. I love the way this looks. You got the mountains in the background here. This is just such a cool map. A lot of people are saying this map is much more difficult than the other maps. It doesn't have as many flat spots, and it doesn't really have the uh, the dev intended line spots. You know what I mean? Like those spots where it clearly would make sense to run a track. But I like that. I'm I'm a big fan of trying to hug the terrain and have lines that aren't all just the same. You know, grade the whole way. That kind of actually feels more like real railroading, in my opinion. Because, you know, a rail this is how you'd run a railroad. You'd try and make it as low to the ground as possible and, you know, avoiding crazy hills. But you want to try and make your, your rails low so that you don't have to spend a whole ton of money building bridges or putting down, you know, a whole ton of fill or building up concrete barriers and all that stuff, right? All right, so we're getting close. We can see the water well now. This has actually been sweet. We're starting to climb up, actually, because, uh... I'm realizing, like, we're not going to make it to the water well if we don't climb at some point here. So I think I'll probably end up putting a switch, like, here. We come down. I thought this brown part was going to be elevated. It's actually a valley. So it's not a mountain, this part of the map. It's a valley. So we came down all the way. We're, like, right flush with the valley line. It looks really, really cool. And then here we're going to turn and probably have some relatively steep lines. Like, we'll put a switch right there. And then, yeah, these lines are probably going to have to be pretty steep to get up. Like, one's got to get up to there. And then the other one's got to... Boy, and then it's got to loop all the way around and get to the other side. I mean, we'll do this one first. It's going to go straight for a bit. We'll probably have to start climbing a little bit, like half a percent or so. Yeah, so if I come down at 2%, 100 meter curve, I can even do 2.5%. I don't think that's... I don't think that that's that bad. I think we're actually going to be able to make that, no problem. Like we get down to like here. I can honestly do 2%. It's a little bit higher, a little bit more fill. But it doesn't look terrible, especially because we have to go up a huge hill just to get to where we're going. Let me just keep going this way. Yeah, I think this is going to be perfect. I mean, it's a, it's a really big loop. Like, you have to go way out there, but I mean, it's fine. And then we'll just clear this up. We'll bring this back. And we'll, uh, we'll have to put the switch... Oh, no, the switch is way back there, right? Yeah, okay. We'll bring this straight, and then we'll connect up to that switch. We could probably put the switch a little bit earlier. The other option is, too, like, we could do it without a switch. We'd have a loop up there, but it would have to be a really tight loop. Nah, it's going to be easier just to have a switch on the main line, honestly. I love the fact that the splines are huge. Now, back in the day, like, people who are just tuning into Railroads Online for the first time, they'll never know the struggle of uh, building track in the original in the original setup. You had to lay all your fill first, and then you had to lay all your track second, and you could only have, like, maybe 10 meter long splines or something, or 20. It was not a very big spline. Now they can do, like, 500. But before, it was super tiny, and you had to just, like, lay fill by fill by fill. You had to manually line up the different pieces of fill because you couldn't link fill to other fill. So if you wanted, like, a smooth-looking track like this where the fill is all, you know, congruent and... 
and everything lines up and looks all great. Yeah, it wasn't going to happen. It was just, it was a nightmare to try and deal with. It was really, really tough to build in. And now it's beautiful with the spline tool and the custom angles and stuff. I mean, it just, you can make really nice looking track relatively easily. Before, it would take days to make a cool track. And then bridges, oh my god. Trying to lay a bridge, you had to put down the bridge first and then the track on top of the bridge. It was, it was tough. It was a very, very tough game to lay track. It was super cool. And like, you know, rewarding, but it would take way longer. And uh, it's so nice with the quality of life. I mean, it's been a while since this this has been put in. It's been like this for a long time now, but it's still wicked nice. Um, the switch is right there. So let's just grab this guy and put it on. Look at this precise mode. And then down we go. Literally have to clear this stupid 5% hill coming out of the loading. This is going to have to be sharper than 100 because there's no way... It's going to get down there if it isn't, but that's fine. We're going to go down to like 4% anyway. Yeah, 4% 70 meters, maybe. Or we have to put the switch way further out, which is actually probably the better option. Let's go to 100. Never mind, I lied. We'll just put the switch out further. Yeah, down 4%, something like that. Keep going. Go down like this, 4% still. Actually, we probably shallow it up a little bit, down to like 3 and that's probably, honestly, really close to the normal height. We'll go straighten this back out. Go down to like one, so we just kind of ease out of the hill a little bit. I don't think this is going to be that bad of a track. Honestly, 4% on the high end, you know? That's pretty good. 5% for that one little section at the load. But, I mean, you come up this loop and, you know, you come up this way. And you go up the steeper side, it should be alright. Yeah, we're going to move that switch out for sure. This is so much better than the bridge track. So much less effort, and it looks way cooler following all the contours of the terrain and stuff. And then, you know, we have to climb back up to the water well, but whatever. If we built the bridge track, we just had a huge bridge to stay at that height. But I feel like this is more, more realistic, more in tune with what would actually happen if you were laying track here. Alright, so we'll delete that, delete that. Let's put a switch here. Again, this is the end of the line, so who cares? Done. And then... Now we should be able to clear this back. Oh god, we gotta go back a little bit further. Probably even a little further than this. And then we'll just curve that switch spline right into this spline. And probably even honestly do it from here. It might let me, like it'll automatically figure out the grade and like the best curve from this point. As long as they're within 500 meters. And that'll probably look much, much smoother. Yeah, perfect. Look at that. So perfect, nice and smooth, excellent. And then we'll connect up this last piece, and then we're good to go. And we're gonna just walk, uh, we'll walk the whole track and delete all the uh, the trees as we go, trees and rocks, make sure that's all cleared out. And then we'll bring our Montezuma down here, fill it up with water and deliver it to the wheat farm, which I think shouldn't be a problem. Like I think, I think the Montezuma's gonna be able to handle one water car, one small water car up, you know, 4% at the high end, but we'll, we'll try it. Worst case, it doesn't make it, and then, you know, we need another engine, I guess. We have to deliver more seeds until we can afford, like, a porter or something. But I think we'll be fine with one water car, honestly. I gotta bring up my tractive effort sheet again. Now that we're done the track, too, I've turned the dynamic weather back on, and I've turned the normal day-night cycle back on. So, it is morning time, technically, but, like, or it's, like, noon or something, or 10 a.m. But either way, we'll, uh, you know, we'll start to see the weather change and all that fun stuff. I always like having it off when I build because, you know, it's obviously easier to see where we're going and uh, the elevation and stuff. But I do like running with it on because I think the weather effects are really cool and, and the, uh, you know, obviously the northern lights and the nighttime. It's just wicked cool as well. I, I love this rail line so much. It's so much better already. It just looks great. Also, I uh, was looking at company names because I know a lot of people were looking at company names. I saw one that I liked a lot. It was Mess. Uh, it was like Mountain Express uh, something service or something like that. Or Mountain Express. Yeah, I can't remember what the S was. I'll have to look it back up in the comments. Thought it was good. I decided though for now, I'm still just naming all the cars Aurora Falls Railroad. Um, just because that's what the Montezuma has as its name. And uh, all the small cars, I'm just going to name Aurora Falls Railroad. Like the little short ones. And I think that's just because, you know, they're like loner cars, let's say. They're part of the initial railroad that was here. And then once we buy our first locomotive, it'll become engine number one 
on whatever our company name is. So that's when I'm going to actually finalize what the company name is going to be. And then all the big cars we buy will be the cars numbered for our railroad and uh, not the Aurora Falls Railroad. And the only reason I do that is because the Montezuma has no number on it. It's number, it's blank. It's just a blank number that says Aurora Falls Railroad. And so I figured, well, we might as well have the cars. I'll just say Aurora Falls Railroad as well until we actually get like, you know, big trains that are our trains. You know what I mean? But in the meantime, we're going to run a train down this track. All right. Hopefully I didn't miss any trees. Full break. There we go. Perfect. Let's go. Full send. Literally just pulling one tiny little car. That's fine. I think we're gonna start picking up some ridiculous speed here. Going down this whole elevation. We could probably honestly just cut the reg at this point. Oh, we're not even at full pressure. Wow, okay, yeah. We're only at 92 PSI of 130. Oh, our fire temp is like zero. We have 20 degree water. That's fine. We're going to do like 30. We might need a break. Doing a little bit of spicy speed here. 30 mile an hour. I mean, it actually feels really smooth. I wonder what they've done. I haven't really been paying attention to their updates on speed limits, to be honest. I know that was always the big thing, and they had issues with the physics, which is why the speed limits existed. So I don't know if there's if it's been better or where That back car does seem to like to bounce a little bit at 30 mile an hour. But the Montezuma seems pretty planted to the rails, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know. This is this is a sick line, though. This is so cool. Just super flush with the ground. Looks really, really intense. Oh, no, we're bouncing a bit at 30. Okay. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I, I honestly haven't paid attention with the physics update notes. I don't know what the deal is. What engines have better speed limits and what don't. Other than the ones from before. Which I think was like, what, the Montezuma and then the, the Cook 260 or something? I'm pretty sure. Or maybe it was the Cook 280. I don't know. It was one of those, I think, that had another speed limit increase. Either way, we're booking it pretty good. This is such a cool map. Sorry, I'm, I'm like, literally, I'm just blown away with how much nicer this rail looks than all those stupid bridges I was doing the first time. It's just so much cooler when you keep the fill nice and low. You can see the terrain kind of goes up in height a little bit in some spots, but our track kind of stays level through it. It's really, really clean. Hopefully there's no rocks here. Nah, I think we're good. Look at that. There the ties are almost touching the ground with no fill. Like, it's just perfect. Love it. We're going way too quick at 36 mile an hour. I think we're getting, there's our, our safety popping. Think we're at the valley, almost? Yeah, we're starting to not go any faster. There is a small part here where we have to climb at half a percent because we go down into the valley and then I went a little too low, so it has to climb back a little bit. I'm like, it doesn't even matter that I'm using the reg. I'm going faster than the speed limit. Oh, perfect. We are going up the sharper side. So that's that's really the, probably the way you want to go in. Go up on the steeper side when you're empty and then come down on the... Uh, well, I guess you could come down on either side, but you don't have to climb the 5% when you're full, which is kind of the thing, which would sort of make more sense. All right, now we're going to need some reg. Eventually. Maybe. Oh, it's getting dark out. Sun's going down. Guess we're going to be loading up at night and bringing it back up the hill at night. Not a big deal. To light up our lantern. Oh boy, that's a struggle bus. Oh no, we're good. We're good. We're good. Oh, shoot. There, cut that. Break. Look at that. Almost perfect. Done. The car itself weighed like 4,000 pounds, I thought. Like, if we look at it. What is it? It's like 4,000... Yeah, 4,000... 3,649 pounds. And then, once we put the freight on it... 13,000 pounds in a single car? Yikes. Alright, good luck, Montezuma. Uh, there are some parts that are 4%. I think Montezuma can pull... 13,000 pounds of 4%, right? Probably. 
pretty sure it can pull, like, I gotta bust my spreadsheet out. Although, last time I had my spreadsheet and I was quoting it, people said my numbers were wrong, and I guess my equations are wrong or something, so I'll have to go back through the spreadsheet and set it up and, and fix it. And, oh, there come the northern lights. That's so cool. So glad they added that effect in. I literally showed this effect to my fiance. It was so funny. And then she was like, oh my god, we need to travel to northern Canada and go look at the northern lights. And I was like, yeah, sure. We'll just get right on that. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. We're from Canada, so it's not that big a deal. But, like, I've never actually traveled way up into the north. Uh, which would be really cool. Because seeing the northern lights in person would probably be neat. I also don't know how far north you have to go. I, I, I don't know. I don't think it's, like, all the way up into the Arctic. I'm pretty sure you can see it from just some of the northern cities in Canada. But, I mean, we'll see. It'd be a cool thing to definitely see at least once in your life, that's for sure. Well, we're losing speed already. Down to 20 mile an hour. This up 1%. We're starting to climb out of the valley, so it'll be 1%, 1.5%. I think it goes up to 2.5% at some point here. I should go and put, like, grade markers uh, along different parts of the track, like the signs, because I know there's signs now. I kind of wish the game had a sign that you could link to a piece of the track. Maybe they do, I haven't looked at it, but like, it would be cool if they had a piece of sign that you could link to the track and it would automatically like read the grade from that part of the track and display it on the sign. So that way you could just go along and just put grade markers down and it would be like, oh, this is 3% or whatever the heck it is. But I guess on a real railroad, they give you the signs beforehand. Like they warn you prior to hitting the part that it's gonna be steeper. Oh, we haven't bogged down too much. We're at 17 mile an hour. This is definitely one of the steeper sections, probably like three. Definitely not the four yet. There's only one section of four that I can think of off the top of my head, and that's right when we get close to the wheat farm. I think this is honestly like three and a half coming up around this corner. It's getting into, I think, the last steep section. This is a relatively shallow 2% part. And then I think we climb here a little bit steeper, right up through this curve. I think we go up to like three here and then four at the last little bit. This curve right here I know is definitely four where the fill gets a little high. So I think if we can make it through that, then we're home free. But I'm pretty sure we're fine. Like I think we're just, we're gonna just sit at 17 mile an hour the whole way. This is definitely gonna need a, a big passing track when I start to invite my buddies back to do like a, a big logistics run. Because people coming up from the sawmill as well are going to be running this track. Or I double track this whole thing. That's another reason to have nice gradual curves. We could just double track it all. And then it would be very effective. Which I think ultimately I will at some point... Oh, Northern Lights are back. But I will, I think, at some point build a huge double track section. Like from the sawmill all the way up through here. All the way up to there. Maybe up to the Railway Express Agency. Because then these lines will pull off for the refinery and the iron smelter. Right? They'll come off around the freight depot, around the wheat farm. You know, the sawmill line might do probably just a single track going to the ironworks, maybe a double track. Yeah, that might need to be double track too. Like double track here, double track here, double track there, double track to there, and then single tracks going to all these auxiliary industries. Not really sure. We'll definitely do multiple op sessions. Like once I get a bunch of stuff set up with like the wood industry, maybe like the whole wheat farm industry. I'll get a bunch of guys in and we'll just run. I need more trains too, obviously. We need more locomotives. But once we have enough locomotives and cars and stuff, then we could make a lot of money quickly, which I think is going to be the whole point of doing op sessions. Might even invite some, you know, subscribers or members at some point in time if, uh, if my buddies aren't available. But my buddies were all like, they're all like, we really like running trains. We just don't like having to do all the track laying and stuff. And I'm like, I kind of get that. But anyway, we're here. We made it. Oh yeah, no, we're going to go past. That's right. I left cars on that track. So we're going to go past and back in. But we made it. No problem. I wasn't worried. 17 mile an hour. I'll, I'll definitely bust out my tractive effort sheet for next time. I think the Montezuma could probably pull like 60,000 pounds up 4%. I feel like that's not an unreasonable number. Um, but I have no idea. I'd have to pull out the spreadsheets. But yeah, I'll, I'll bust it out for next time. And we'll definitely take a look and see if uh, what we can actually do. Maybe buy a couple more water cars. Really get this wheat industry popping. And then we got to start selling the wheat products back to the freight depot. Probably for pennies. But, you know, eventually I guess we got to connect up to the cattle plant too. So that would probably be actually the smarter move. Alright, let's turn that in reverse. There we go. Go that way. Perfect. Are we... Is it going to stop? No? Cool. There we go. Alright. 
Let's go backwards, unload this, and get the heck out of here. Okay. Okay, there's no valve. I thought maybe there was like a valve on one side, not the other. I don't think there is. So I, I just go like this. There we go. Oh my god, that was that was six water out of a hundred? Oh no. I mean, I guess it says zero of six. I thought maybe it would be like ten. Alright, what does that take? That took two water and two seeds. I don't remember how many seeds I brought. 24 probably, right? So two water and two seeds. And then what does that make me for products? Oh, there goes the rooster. Must be getting morning time. Makes me one straw bale. Okay, and does it make me like any grain? And one grain. So two water and two seeds makes one and one. Oh lord, we're gonna need a lot of water, water cars. Yeah, two and two makes one and one. Yikes. Yikes, that we're gonna need like ten water cars to actually do something. 10 water cars would be 60 water. Yeah, we're gonna- I'm gonna pull out the attractive effort sheet and see what the Montezuma can do and buy a few more of those small water cars, because that's- that's insane. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure, of course, you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let me know where you want us to go. Uh, I mean, there's no real- where- we're gonna go to the cattle farm next. I think the cattle farm requires products from the wheat farm. Oh, that's cool. It actually grows crops. But yeah, I think the cattle farm requires products from the wheat farm. So we're gonna go past the freight depot, go to the cattle farm. Maybe we'll build a big shunt yard at the freight depot first. So we have room to store all our extra cars. But we've connected up to the water well. Honestly, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Everyone in the comments was telling me it was going to be a lot worse than it is. Some weird parts to it, but not too bad. But either way, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you hit those buttons. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we'll see you all next time.